Stevie Wonder was the host of that. Uh, if you can imagine that, Stevie is a good wonder. He came, <laughs> good wonder in all shapes and form on that one. He came to me because I've known Stevie for working with him so many years on the Grammys. He and his manager came to me and said, we want to do, uh, for when Martin Luther King, his first, when the first holiday occurred, we want to do a major celebration. And uh, they got me approved by, to Coretta King. And we want to do it in Radio City Music Hall and in Atlanta and, and in Washington. Stevie was going to be the host. And he says, well, how are we going to do this? I said, I've got an idea, Stevie. What if we gave you an IFB? It's a little earphone in his ear. And I said, I want to have a girl read the script to you because her voice will cut through. And anytime I want you, I can interrupt it. And I, it's what we call an IFB circuit. So I can have to override. And so, and I said, it's going to work. He says, you sure? And I says, yeah, you listen to me. You just bounce a little bit and you do what I tell you to do. And you're going to work. You, listen, you say everything she says and you got it. We rehearsed him with him, and it worked. I said, I got in. Steve, look a little bit to your left. Stop. Smile. And then and I turn to your right. Now. It's done. Then he'd smile. do it. He'd stop. T look straight. Okay? Talk. That's how we did the whole show. And uh, I gave his time cues that way to his headphone, but the girl would give him the script. Read them. Hello, hi there, how are you doing, and so forth. Whatever. He'd do the repeat every single word. And that's how he was no prompter, obviously. And she was his prompter. And they, I don't think it's ever done again, but that worked. And we intercut with the New York, and he had back and forth conversations with the people on stage in New York, and the same with in Atlanta. And we intercut, well, we had, we had trucks underneath the Kennedy Center. And at the same time, I had my daughter. She was editing on one truck, and because I was getting it in from New York and from Atlanta, because I was in communication with all, I saw cameras from all places because if Neil Diamond was doing a number in New York, I wanted his second number because I had him do two extra numbers so they can get their lighting, their sound balance, and him ready. And so because the third one was the one I wanted to have. And we had ADs watching this, and so the th that third one was going into the editing truck, and the right person introducing with that would work to Stevie. It's the same thing that we, we did down in Atlanta. It's the same thing. Then we would have telling the story of Martin Luther, uh, uh, Martin Luther King. We would tell the same script in all three locations. But we knew we were doing the first paragraph here, the second paragraph there, the third paragraph there, and we would intercut. And all three knew we, by script who was going to do what, but they were all going to do the whole thing. So it made sense in each location. And so we would make it look like they were all in sync with each other as we edited it together. My daughter was doing all the editing. And then as she was editing, we had another truck. As she edited it, we took it over there and we fed it to NBC as we were going. And so she didn't have that final reel done until two minutes that, that me reel had to get on or we weren't going to finish the show on the air. And that's how the whole show was put together like it was live from Kennedy Center, New York, and Atlanta.